Hey everybody, this is Pastor Megan Rohr from Grace Lutheran here in San Francisco. You can join us live or on live stream every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for worship. Now, um, in November and December, we'll have a new activity that we're trying out here in our church space. You can either join us live at 6 p.m. here at Grace or online each week, and we will be reading this book together, The Book of Forgiving by Desmond Tutu and his daughter. And part of what we'll do each week, um, for those of you who are going to be following along virtually with our book club, because sometimes figuring out how to forgive or the things that you want to forgive people about, sometimes you want to do that in private and you don't necessarily want to chat at a book club about it. Um, if that's you, that's completely fine. The book has activities in it, and um, what we'll be doing is consciously reading it together um, and talking about it and sharing some maybe resources that can help. You can um, contact me, pastor at gracesf.com at any point if you'd like some pastoral care to chat more about things on, on email, on the phone, um, through Facebook, whatever works for you. This week, um, we're thinking about forgiving. Why do we even want to do this? Maybe you haven't even decided, like, why do I want to buy this book? Do I want to buy this book? Do I want to participate? Why bother? Forgiveness is about people that have wronged me, so why should I do the work when they're the ones who screwed everything up? And part of what this book is about is is reminding us that forgiving is good for the entire world. It's good for our congregations. It's good for our workspaces. It's good for our families. It's good for politics. And um, scientists will even say that it's good for our health. There's a video right down here um, from Soul Pancake that will explain the science behind it and show you a little bit about how that works. Um, what I want to do is to talk a little bit about the religious reasons that learning to forgive can be a useful thing. There's a couple of things in the Bible that make it worth your while to study a book like this or to figure out how to be good at forgiving. First of all, I'm a Lutheran. Lutherans don't believe you have to do anything to ever deserve God's love. You get it. It's God reaching out towards us that is our salvation and, and what brings forgiveness to us. You don't have to do anything. You can skip every page of the Bible study or of the book study or of church if you want to. And God still reaches out to us. So there's no, like, do this or else in, in at least the Lutheran way of thinking. But what there is are some, some very interesting texts, um, basically, which you can sum to this idea that the standard we hold for others is the standard that God will hold for us. Now, this is something when Jesus is talking about these verses, he's He's particularly trying to undercut people who are holding others to a really strict account. And he's trying to show the freedom that can come from baptism and from being a Christian as opposed to being a part of the Jewish tradition. So there's a bit of, of, of kind of trying to sell you on, on this being an easier path. The difficulty is, is for some of us, loving our neighbor is easier than loving ourselves. For others, loving ourselves is easier than loving and forgiving our neighbors. And so whether you use this book to learn to forgive hiccups that you've had in your own life or misspoken things or things that you blatantly screwed up or other, other misdeeds that might have happened, or whether this is about reconciling with other people, whether you ever talk to them again, but reconciling with them in your heart, even when it's not safe, to reconcile with them physically. Um, this book, and I believe that forgiveness is something that makes us better. Even if we never have a conversation with the people we've wronged, or we never have a com conversation with the people who have wronged us, that, that working on ourselves, working on letting go of all of those bits of baggage that we carry around can be helpful for us. In the introduction, which we'll read for next week, next week we're going to read the introduction and chapter one. And if you can, um, try to do at least one of the activities after the end of chapter one. In the introduction, you'll find um, some prayers for getting ready and um, preparing 
the process of forgiving, getting even even a state of mind to even want to forgive. Um, and and so I just want to read this to you um, because I think it's a, an interesting prayer that lets you know that even if you read this book, knowing full well you're not going to be able to forgive somebody at the end, that it's, it's okay. Um, but maybe this prayer will help you get ready to get there. So they write, I want to be willing to forgive, but I dare not ask for the will to forgive. In case you give it to me and I am not yet ready, I am not yet ready for my heart to soften. I'm not yet ready to be vulnerable again, not yet ready to see that there is humanity in my tormentor's eyes or that the one who hurt me may also have cried. I'm not yet ready for the journey. I'm not yet interested in the path. I'm at the prayer before the prayer of forgiveness. Grant me the will to want to forgive. Grant it to me, but not soon. Can I even form the words, forgive me? Dare I even look? Do I dare to see the hurt I have caused? I can glimpse all the shattered pieces of the fragile thing of the soul trying to rise on broken wings of hope, but only out of the corner of my eye. I'm afraid of it. And if I'm afraid to see, how can I not be afraid to say, forgive me? Is there a place where we can meet, you and me, the place in the middle, the no man's land, where we straddle the lines, where you are right and I am right too, and both of us are wrong and wronged? Can we meet there and look for a place where the path begins, the past that, path that ends when we forgive? So whether you're just uh, watching this video and you're going to decide, no way, that book's not for me, or I don't want to participate in this, um, that's fine. Know that um, God forgives you even when we aren't yet ready. And if we are lucky enough to have the time to reconcile with all of the people in our lives, it is a blessing not only for them, but for our, our own selves. And so... Today, I, I bless you for this journey. I give you credit just for even having the bravery to click on this video and to contemplate forgiving other people, or contemplate reading this book and going on the journey towards forgiving some of the hardest stuff that you can imagine. I know in, in my past, there's people and there's things that I have not um, been willing to forgive. There's other things that I've forgiven way easier than maybe I should have. And, and that's, that's kind of how it works. There's no expectation that we'll be perfect or that our forgiving will be perfect, but that we'll be on this journey together. So if you choose, I will be around next week and we'll talk about the introduction and chapter one and next steps. Thanks for sharing some time with me. Be well.